We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. The youth IGF battles encourage developing responses to generate a global pipeline of robust civic solutions from young people around the world. We want to highlight the projects where ideas evolve to solutions so global youth can share and learn on the digital frontier. Each battle was conceived as a 30-minute debate between two groups of young people based on one of the eight priority areas. Each of the debates was region-based. For example, Youth IGF Europe. Hi everyone, my name is Fabio. I am relatively new to the internet governance field, but I'm nonetheless very much excited for this upcoming debate. I am studying environmental science, but I have a background in political science as well. And it is at the interface between political science and the internet governance field where we're gonna have our discussion today. And this is why I think I'm gonna win. Hi everyone, I'm Marco Pawoski, coming from North Macedonia student and system engineer, uh, part of the national IGF and uh, active member in the Southeast Europe dialogue on internet governance. I will take part in the IGF battles. See you then. Привет. Я Юлия, и я учусь на журналиста в СПГУ. Родилась и я в Москве, в ее округе Зеленограде. И самый частый вопрос, который мне задают, это зачем я уехала учиться в Петербург? Но он, видимо, риторический. Этим летом я прошла школу по управлению интернетом и начала писать журнал «Журналист», где рассказываю о современных медиа и о тех процессах, которые происходят в области интернет-коммуникации. Hello, everyone. I'm Antoine Shotorov, 29 years old, from Bulgaria. Currently, I'm a PhD student in the biggest economic university in Bulgaria, the University of National and World Economy, and I'm investigating the relationship between innovation and competitiveness. Also, I am a co-founder of three innovative companies here in Bulgaria. The first one is software company employing more than 10 employees. The second one is consulting company in the field of innovation. And the third one is uh, online platform for voice messages. As I said, I am interested uh, in the field of innovation and entrepreneurship. And also, I have background in the field of uh, financials, in the financial sector, because I've been working for almost five years on three different managerial positions in one of the biggest uh, banks in Bulgaria. So I will be happy to share my thoughts about the digital euro, and I will be happy you to listen to the interview. Stay tuned. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm coming from Albania. I'm currently a student majoring in computer science at the American College of Thessaloniki. For the past three years, I've been heavily involved in the field of internet governance as a youth participant at the United Nations Internet Governance. And currently I serve as a co-organizer at the Albanian Youth Internet Governance Forum and many other uh, fellowships with ICANN, IETF and CIDIG, which is a regional internet governance forum here in Eastern Europe. Uh, one of my main interests as well has to do with the intersection of technology policy and uh, entrepreneurship, mainly in uh, digital equity, in capacity building, in AI, cybersecurity, and big data. Uh, I would look forward to all the discussions that we have regarding uh, internet governance issues and digital policy. Hi, everyone. I'm Julia Lissita from Indonesia. Currently, I'm doing my final year of Master's degree for public policy at Tsinghua University, China. Specifically, I'm interested in internet governance issue because I think it's important for young people like me to get more involved in defining the future of our internet. Also, I'm so glad to be joining you today, and I hope that today we will have a fruitful discussion. See you. I'm Shah Zahid Rahman, Isaac Youth Ambassador from Bangladesh. I'm holding bachelor degree in computer science, and my area of interest is artificial intelligence, IoT, and big data. As a youth community ambassador, 
I am doing the several capacity program and awareness among the youth in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a developing country, mostly doing the technologies and other things are upcoming. And we are doing our best to keep the as we knowledge. خبير قانوني في تكنولوجيا المعلومات أنا سفير منتدى الشباب لحكم الجبل لقد عملنا في لبنان منذ عدة سنوات على مساعدة الشباب وتطوير قدراتهم على دخول عالم الجبل وإنشاء شركاتهم وتطويرها كما أيضا على حماية نفسهم من مخاطر I was a graduate from University College London in pharmacy and currently working as a pre-registration pharmacist at St. Bartholomew's Hospital. I think this movement is more important than ever before, as particularly during these difficult times of the pandemic, we're seeing a surge in the fake online pharmacies and, in, and disinformation being spread online. I think education, raising awareness, and even policy change are really, really important factors that we need to consider to fight this parallel pandemic of fake information being spread online, as well as the current surge we're seeing in fake online pharmacy. <laughs> de Portugal, da região centro da zona de Coimbra. Um, sou um entusiasta da tecnologia, portanto gosto muito um, do ponto de vista técnico foi o que eu estudei. Uh, sou especialista em inteligência artificial e espero muito poder discutir convosco estes e outros temas. Hi everyone, my name is Rezwana Mosler. I'm a youth IGF ambassador of Australia. I've been working on internet governance issues since 2012. I have done my bachelor's and master's in Since 2020 March, Australia has the internet is now a vital issue of Australia. The users has increased and everyone is working from home. For that reason, we are more concerned on the internet issues such as cyberbullying, cybersecurity, online harassment, etc. I'd like to work more on the internet governance issues so that the youth participation and the next generation of Australia can be a part of the improvement of this internet journey. Thank you. We discussed, among others, AI in rural areas, Digital Euro, 5G and Green IT, Digital Services Act, misinformation, and now four recommendations we bring to you. Hello, good, uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Poland. Good afternoon uh, from, um, from the youth IGF. I'm uh, Julia from the youth IGF. I will be uh, moderating or kind of facilitating uh, this open forum, this open forum that, uh, which is organized uh, with the EU delegation to the, uh, to the IGF and the youth IGF itself. Uh, we are innovating in a very hybrid uh, manner. Uh, normally, the moderator in the room and the participants are online. Uh, this time, we're doing the opposite. We have a few uh, participants and key speakers present in the room. We do uh, see them. Uh, we will introduce them in a minute. And unfortunately, the facilitator is not there. Uh, but I can imagine that uh, that will not be the problem. Um, apologies for the uh, audio problems. If in the room, Katowice, uh, you, you heard, you know, uh, the message that we wanted to bring to you in a, in a little bit, uh, you know, uh, problematic manner. As I said, we're innovating, we're learning from technology. But the idea of this message was, you know, to show you the whole geography and the languages we used during these Youth IGF 2020 battles that were organized, uh, um, uh, you know, um, uh, in 10 countries in four or even in five different languages. And so we uh, expressly wanted to leave these languages to you, even if you don't speak Arabic, Russian or Portuguese, 
you know, to see that young people in even in their national, in, in, in their language uh, can uh, have impact, can discuss issues and bring solutions. That was the idea uh, that we took by bringing this, you know, video to you. And uh, based on these battles that are available online, but each of them uh, will last uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so we, you know, made these uh, small cuts to you. Uh, you can still see, watch them online. We prepare, well, not we, but they prepared for recommendations. So um, I would like to present our key speakers, key people that will be with us today. Uh, and, um, and then present a little bit how we foresee the organization of, um, you know, of, of, of this hour. Uh, so I'm very pleased we will have a recorded message show with Mr. Vinton Sir, who is known as the father of the internet. Um, I don't think I need to introduce him. Uh, and he's a vice president and chief um, internet evangelist at Google today. And he reported an amazing strong message that I will bring um, to you. And actually that's the message uh, to the whole community and to the young people. Uh, then we have with us uh, uh, Mrs. Yuping Chan. She's in the room in Katowice. We would like to welcome her. She's a senior program officer at the office of the UN Secretary General in Voy on Technology. Uh, Yu Ping Chan, thank you for joining us. I think it's very important for the young people to know that the UN um, is keeping an eye on what the young people are, are have to say. Uh, please be welcome um, if um, uh, Yu Ping Chan is, is on this stage. Uh, we have also with us uh, Mr. Pierce O'Donoghue. He is a director at the Directorate E which means future networks at the DigiConnect at the European Commission. Uh, um, Piers, please be welcome. It's great to have you in Katowice in Poland. Uh, Piers is on stage as well. And um, uh, a lot has been possible in this organization of this open forum to due to the team and the work of uh, Mr. Donne and uh, Mr. Donny himself. So thank you for, for joining us. We have with us uh, uh, Mrs. May Lin Fung. She's online remotely from US, from California. Um, May Lin, uh, great to have you with us. I know you have a lot to say to the young people, so we'll give you this opportunity as well. And we have with us uh, Giovanni Sepe. Giovanni Sepe is external relations manager at URID. Um, for those, uh, if you don't know what does URIT mean, uh, uh, URIT is managing.eu and, and Giovanni will have the opportunity to not only to bring the message to the young people, to, to you know, react on what uh, uh, he will hear, but also to explain what is URIT about. Uh, Giovanni Sepe is online with us. Uh, indeed, I don't see him with camera, but, uh, but I see him online, so probably he... Uh, oh, he's here. All right. Uh, Giovanni, Sebe, please be welcome. And I can imagine in the room in Katowice, we do see you as well. So we, we will be always uh, having this uh, coming back with the Katowice and uh, different countries around the world um, on, on, online. Uh, so the, the idea of the setting is the following. It's not really fixed format because we wanted this and how we first seen this at the beginning is to have really the dialogue between the young people and the and the decision makers. And I think, uh, please correct me, specifically Pierce Adonio and, and other leaders, if I'm mistaken, but I think it's very important for you to understand what the young people would like to have or need from the decision makers. And it's how we foresee the whole, you know, the whole scenario. We will go to the message of Pinsurf and then we will give actually the opportunity to young people to give their recommendations on, you know, uh, that came from these battles, uh, Youth IGF battles 2020. And then we will propose to the leaders to comment on recommendations on what they seen, what they heard and, you know, um, and, and, and um, um, what they can do. Uh, that's the idea. So in order, uh, we have um, uh, more or less uh, 40 minutes from now. So let's start uh, with the message of Vinton Surf, and then um, we will be back to our young people and to our great, um, I hope, uh, recommendations. Hello, my name is Vince Cerf. I'm Vice President and Chief Internet Evangelist at Google. 
I really appreciate an opportunity to talk to you about your interest in the Internet Governance Forum and Internet Matters in general. By this time, many of you were making heavy use of applications on the Internet. Maybe some of you are contributing to the further uh, spread of uh, access to Internet and making it more available and more useful. And you will have figured out that uh, there are a lot of things that are very powerful and useful about the Internet and its applications on the World Wide Web. But you've also figured out that there are hazards and risks associated with the online environment. This is a complex ecosystem and it uh, needs work. Uh, we need a safer and more secure internet for people to rely on. And that will fall to some of you uh, to develop new technologies and to adopt new policies and to implement new uh, facilities and new capabilities uh, to create a safer environment for everyone. Some of that uh, relates to strong uh, authentication of identity, uh, use of uh, two-factor authentication, the use of public key cryptography in order to uh, maintain uh, strong identification and also uh, integrity of content so that people can't alter things uh, and uh, misrepresent things. Uh, but this is not just a technological challenge, it's also a political and regulatory challenge What's happening today around the world is that governments are seeing the internet as a potential threat in the following sense. For authoritarian governments, the threat might be disruption of the government um, by people who don't like uh, the authority of that government. And so their response to this is to find a way to control what, who does what on the internet, who says what, who is allowed to get access to what information. That's an, uh, an understandable reaction, even if we don't necessarily agree with it. But there's the other side in the uh, more democratic governments, there's still a big concern about what's going on on the internet, what content is available, particularly as we worry about misinformation, disinformation, uh, political disruption, uh, polarization uh, among the electorate to say nothing of the general population. And so those governments are also worried about protecting not themselves so much, but the, uh, the population from harm. Uh, this also uh, induces a need for international cooperation for law enforcement, for example, because the harms that can be perpetrated through this online environment can occur across international boundaries. And that means that in order to identify and apprehend parties who are harming others through the internet, they may need other governments to cooperate with each other in order to uh, capture uh, or identify and, uh, and bring those uh, harmful uh, parties to justice. So uh, this translates into more international agreements about uh, and, and cooperation in the law enforcement space. And, and more generally, even uh, outside of laws, I mean, there are there are need, uh, there is a need for norms of behavior to be widely adopted. The, uh, one of the, the Global uh, Council for the Stability of Cyberspace uh, has generated something like a dozen or more recommended norms. The first one of which had to do with protecting the core infrastructure of the internet from deliberate attack. That's the, the routers and the domain system, and the boot servers and other parts of it. The BGP uh, routing systems are all essential components of the way the internet operates. And those are um, considered to be, uh, well, it's considered that they should be protected against deliberate attack. And so that's an example of a norm that could be adopted. And at some point, some of those norms could turn into real treaty agreements you know, that are enforceable. But even if they're not enforceable, it's still a good idea to surface those kinds of ideas and to advocate for their adoption. Uh, and so I would urge all of you to think in this broad context about making the internet safer and more secure for everyone, so as to allow our, ourselves to build more applications that we can rely on that improve our daily lives. One last point to be made about all of this technology is that uh, it is technology and technology is never perfect, uh, nor is it necessarily always reliable. And so uh, I come away with a certain amount of concern over the smartphone as uh, remarkable 
an instrument as it is, and it's turning into uh, something you can use for medical uh, evaluations and you know, detecting medical conditions. You can use it for streaming audio and video for conferencing, like uh, uh, you would be doing now if I were there uh, live with you. Uh, so all those applications are, are there. But when it doesn't work for some reason, like the battery is dead or uh, internet access isn't available, either the Wi-Fi doesn't work or the 4G or 5G isn't available, then suddenly a whole lot of things don't happen because the device isn't uh, workable. And, and you end up with a kind of a cascade effect when because of this not working, then that doesn't work. <laughs> because that doesn't work, something else doesn't work. So we should be very concerned about uh, the reliability of these uh, systems and also the ability to do something else as backup in case the system doesn't work. So those of you who are responsible for designing products that are programmable and use networks and so on should think uh, how to make them more resilient in the face of possible failures. Uh, that so far as to have you know two-factor authentication with backup passwords that you can use if the two-factor system isn't working. So I will leave it to you uh, to fashion your own future and fashion your own response to these challenges because you will inherit them, uh, like it or not. People like me will eventually go on to our whatever reward we learn, uh, and you will be responsible for making the internet better. And I'm sure that many of you will rise to that challenge. I'm sorry I can't be there in person uh, to greet you and have this conversation, but perhaps we'll cross paths on the net. Well, we, we heard the message from uh, Vinton Surf, and I think it's a, a, the message is quite, uh, it's, it's quite strong because um, the young people, one of the sessions, one of the battles was on this information, on misinformation. I would be very interested in showing you actually what the young people, and we prepare these parts. I hope we will have time. If we have time in the program, we will show you what the young people said about the same subject, you know, that the Winston Surf just addressed. But I would like to invite now uh, Levi uh, from, um, from Zambia, Levi Sianseke. Uh, I hope Levi is uh, with us online and he will present the first recommendation. Um, we, you know, the, as I said, we have um, young people prepared four recommendations based on these battles. He will present his first recommendation. But I, um, do we have Levi with us? Yes, we, I do see Levi. Uh, but first, I would like Levi to ask you what is your feedback, your feeling from these youth IGF battles, but also what do you need? Uh, from the decision makers. Okay, so you can help me confirm if you're about to get me. Uh, thank you, Yulia, and the youth IGF. Um, what do I make? Uh, so far, I think what comes out is the fact that we have a lot of uh, conversations about internet governance, which I think most of the young people have been partially left out. But so far from the uh, battles, the organized battles that we had recently, I think so voices of youth being actually aired out to bring out different issues affecting the youth, especially on the internet space. And that on its own has been actually very helpful because you are seeing that there's a bit more of youth inclusion in the internet governance conversation. Right, thank you, Levi. I think you, um, the first recommendations that uh, were, were made is really to, uh, to include the young people in the uh, in the mag, actually, in the presence of the young uh, on the mag, is is it correct? Uh, what I have, I think, on the yes, it's mainly youth inclusion on the mag, uh, which I may have to get into in in just a moment. So mainly it was around encouraging youth participation in the mag, uh, as well as the creation of permanent consultation channels. That's between the youth IGF as well as the globally recognized groups on the internet. Thank you, Levi. We will be back on, on that recommendation. And why do you think it's important to have uh, you know, a constant dialogue between the young people and the MAG IGF, as well as a high-level body of the IGF and the young? 
I would like to go now to Yulia, uh, or sorry, to Rezuana, I think. Uh, Rezuana, you are from Australia, actually, because you it's very late for you. I know, um, you know, uh, you kind of ask to be uh, one of the first to speak. So Rezuana, what is your feeling from the uh, from the battles and what, uh, what do you want from the decision makers and what is the recommendation you would like to present? Oh, thank you, Leah, and thank you, the IGFs, to, um, for giving me the platform to speak and represent the youth voice of Australia. Um, actually, as we know and we have heard from Windsor, um, that uh, technology is never perfect. We are the young people who has the responsibility to take it forward. And um, as because, you know, we have so many issues to be concerned of regarding um, where, well, where we can, there are room for, for improvement. Um, there are online privacy, there are cybersecurity, there are misinformation, there are digital sovereignty and domain names and matters like um, where we have the new legislations, the new UU legislations on digital services and all. So um, to start with, I would like to suggest the main recommendation that I would like to promote is to promote and encourage um, to have more uh, dialogues between the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Technology, the UN Secretary General's High-Level Panel on Digital Corporation, and um, with the globally recognized youth uh, groups, so that we can, you know, and ensure that all parts of the world are actually on the same track and have the same kind of security that we are expecting and the same kind of future that we are going to build together um, online human rights exist online as they do offline and we need to have it ha has to be there has to be some center of um, digital technology where we must mitigate online harms and raising raise um, digital security threats um, uh, 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 rising digital security threats especially for the one vulnerable which are youth so I would like to make that recommendation where we can um, make more capacity building as an absolute uh, prerequisite for achieving that real sustained progress in terms of the internet security. Thank you, Leah. Th thank you, Rezwana. I thank you for your <clears throat> for the for bringing that recommendation. I think it will be very interesting to hear from uh, you know um, from the decision makers present in the room what they think about and also continue this dialogue. And maybe um, I, I do have questions to you, but probably they have questions to you as well. Um, I would like to bring uh, on stage now Yulia. Yulia is uh, the youth IGF um, partner in the Russian Federation, and you are also ITU. The Generation Connect um, person for uh, Russia and CIS um, region. So, Yulia, uh, what do you think? What is your feeling after these uh, battles? And what do you want from the decision makers? The same question in what are the recommendations actually that you would like to present? Well, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the chance to speak. Uh, so, our battles, uh, which were organized by the youth uh, IGF, were in online format. So, there was an opportunity to involve people of different nationalities, professions, and ages. Um, as already mentioned, the debate was held on eight of the most sensitive, sensitive for young people uh, topics, from uh, the implementation of 5G technologies to, um, for example, online educating. Um, the battles, I think, unlike a lecture or a column dialogue, include an idea that a speaker must, in a very short period of time, provide maximum arguments and detailed examples, facts, uh, or data. So it's uh, a little bit uh, difficult, I think. Uh, in addition, to the two participants of this battle, uh, there was an invited expert. In case uh, of a Russian discussion, uh, it was a professor of high school of economics, and he summarized our positions and then supported uh, them with the arguments of academic circles. Um, as a result, we have reached uh, conclusions on all eight debates, and uh, we have particular recommendations that we partners of the USAGF uh, wish to voice. We think that uh, collaborating young people with the Office of the United Nations Secretary General's Envoy must be enhanced. 
we suppose the office can develop a process uh, of the global recognition of innovative ideas that young leaders find the most significant in digital cooperation. And finally, our proposals, so even the results of our battles, for example, can be scaled from an idea to a fully fledged solution. Uh, that's all that I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yulia. I think you got you um, gave a lot of information, um, you know, to debate right now. And we have also the um, uh, the fourth recommendation. Uh, practically, um, uh, we and I and I will I will read this recommendation, which is uh, promote the formation of youth consultation committees um, and bodies and or bodies actually with the corporate governance structures of the organizations involved in internet governance. And the .eu Youth Committee could serve as an excellent best practice uh, case. And um, actually, we will ask and you know, redirect this question to Giovanni Sepia, who initiated with the dot, with URI, uh, the Youth Committee uh, of the EU. And uh, we would like to hear um, from Giovanni Sepia in a while. But first, I would like to um, uh, to uh, you know to invite. And to bring on stage uh, Mrs. Yu Ping Chan and to have her feedback on what she just heard and uh, to ask her to make a, a statement and uh, say something to the young people. Thank you, Yulia. Can I start by saying that I love this format? I think it's really cool. I think it would be amazing if this could actually be part of the full IGF session where the young people present their recommendations and it's not just myself and peers, but like the full IGF community, the older ones and the ones, the mag and so forth, they're called to respond to them because I think it's really pertinent. And this is something that the United Nations is committed to that we listen to what young people want and we respond concretely to their proposals and their recommendations. So I wanna start by that point that we at the United Nations recognize that if we are to build an open, free and secure digital future for all, then really it's incumbent on us to make sure that young people are part of the conversation and that we build that precise, inclusive digital future by involving them from the start. I will also though preface this by saying that I'm very flattered by Yulia's comment that I am a decision maker and the person with the ability to change the United Nations and the way it works. Unfortunately, I am not. I'm but a cog in the UN wheel. But what I will promise you is that the Office of the Tech Envoy is committed to strengthening youth voices and you will always have a friend in my office and that we will convey back your messages to the policymakers that count and the ones that will make those decisions and that we will try to amplify the very important things that you've said here today. So let me go through the recommendations one by one. Um, starting with Levy and this idea that we need to have youth inclusion in internet government governance discussions. We completely agree and we really do think that this is something that needs to be strengthened. So that work around including young people on the MAG I think is something that we need to continue to work towards and from the Office of the Tech Envoy we will do our best to strengthen that type of messaging. Um, from Witzrana, this idea that you need to promote and encourage more dialogues and to look at areas such as, um, for instance, mitigating online harms, digital security, capacity building. These are all areas that have been brought forward in the Secretary General's vision of the digital cooperation roadmap. And indeed, there are multi-stakeholder roundtables, which are consisting of private sector entities, UN entities, um, governments taking this forward. But I take to heart your point that perhaps young people need to be more deeply engaged in these discussions as well. And perhaps we can have another conversation through the IGF Secretariat or directly with you and your various organizations, how you can be more included in this process. The third recommendation from Yulia that we need a process of innovative ideas in the most significant areas of digital cooperation. This is particularly interesting because some of you may have recognized that in the Secretary General's recent report, Our Common Agenda, which was a response to what people of the world wanted on the occasion of the United Nations 75th anniversary, he proposes a global digital compact where we at the Office of the Tech Envoy will be coordinating an inclusive bottom-up public consultation on what precisely means it means to have a global digital compact, which would be an understanding that is reached not just by governments, but also by the private sector, civil society, and indeed future generations and youth voices as well. So we really do think that youth should be part of that conversation about what you want to see in a global digital compact. And so I think that this idea that comes from recommendation three in Yulia about how we uh, how you as the youth can really consolidate these most innovative ideas and what you think are the priorities in digital cooperation would find a home in the digital compact. And I really do encourage you 
the IGF, the youth IGF movement, perhaps through the NRIs in the IGF structure to think about how you too can contribute to the general compact as it is built. The fourth recommendation on the formation of youth consultation committees were corporate governance structures. I think this is a very interesting one because it really does go to the heart of precisely what we're talking about here at the IGF. It has to be a multi-stakeholder model, not just governments, but also with private sector, corporate structures as well. And youth engagement in that type of process, I think is very important. You mentioned the Youth Committee of the EU. So that could be a model that we could look at both within the UN, within the IGF structure as well. So in summary, I do think your recommendations are very important. We will take them home. I will convey them to the parts of the UN that make certain types of structural decisions but let me re-emphasize the point that we very much at the Office of the Tech Envoy value your contributions, look forward to being part of the process. And really, again, I've been so inspired and energized by everything that I've heard today. And I really do want to watch all the battles and the videos in detail. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Yukon Chan. And I um, apologize for the noise coming from my side. If you know when you set your studio and all is ready and the uh, your neighbors start the building work, it's um, unfortunately it's that day. Um, apologize if you hear this. I will I will avoid speaking a lot. Um, I can just say wow, and um, I, I'm pretty sure that the young people that you know were following your your comment um, are more than happy because that's like. A, like it, it, it's what they, they wanted to hear, to be, to be very, I think I will give the floor to them. Um, I would like to, to turn to Mr. Donner, Pierce Donner, to, to make his comments and to give his view from the European Union, uh, European Commission. Um, and, then, um, and then if we have time, Yu Ping Chan, we will bring this very short, um, you know, um, <clears throat> statement of the young that they made during the battles on misinformation because it's really very, very interesting, at least from my point of view. Uh, Mr. Adone, Pierce Adone, please, the floor is yours. Um, and, uh, and we will have you from Katowice, Poland. Okay, thank you very much, Yulia, and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I have to start by uh, picking up on exactly what Yu Ping mentioned is that as well as the, the four core recommendations, as well as the outcome from the battles, actually another sort of recommendation stroke instruction that we should take is actually the process of the way that this session is run. First of all, those with the ideas spoke first and the people whom you call decision makers, but shall we say people who might be able to do something with this, listen and will listen and then respond, not the other way around. Um, I, I can say this because I've been to enough IGFs to say, just as we saw this morning, a very important opening event with high level speakers who tend to make speeches and then leave. Uh, and that's one of the things that we need to actually improve if the IGF and all of the multi stakeholder processes to have value and more importantly have impact. So in this case, we're talking about that community, which is young people. Of course, young people cannot be just classified as that group. You are a very diverse group of individuals in terms of identity, nationality, uh, belief, race, ethnicity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and and uh, hopefully you will, as your shall we say careers in internet governance develop, that you will be able to represent a multiplicity of views, that diversity throughout everything we're doing. Um, but it is very important for us in this context that uh, the uh, uh, the the ideas of but the work of young people in regards to the governing of the internet, the running of the internet is listened to and has put center stage to what we do. It is, as Vin Cerf said, it is the future. Um, but also we see that it aligns very closely to the ambitions that the European Union has expressed as regards Europe, but certainly that uh, the United Nations uh, has uh, ascribed to. And we see that from the Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation. So uh, the topics that you touched are very close to my heart. They're very close to our working agenda on artificial intelligence, on 5G, uh, which is something I spend a lot of time in doing, and also on green ICTs, on disinformation, uh, and so on. Things that, that we have made a lot of effort on, and of course, they can be questioned. Did we take the input, did we take properly into account the views of young people, the next generation, uh, when we designed our policy um, tools, and that's something which we, we need to continuously ask ourselves. And the way that you're doing it through the youth IGF and feeding into the main IGF is very important because this forum is for us the most important 
sounding board for internet policy and one that we want to preserve, but also to strengthen and make more uh, relevant and effective. And your involvement will help us to do that. Now, on the, the specific, uh, the, the top level recommendations, the four recommendations as I heard them, well, of course, I can only say yes, we strongly agree that we need to uh, have uh, a representation of and even participation of youth IGF and young people, but certainly linked to the work of the new uh, panel for the Tech Envoy. And then, of course, uh, a place in the discussions of the multi-stakeholder advisory group, the MAG, which sets the agenda, but also then seeks to deliver on some of the policy recommendations made in the context of the IGF. So from those policy action uh, recommendations, uh, I, I would certainly uh, strongly support them. And as I said, even the, the format of holding meetings like this one is something which we should impact on and try and make that uh, more of a standard process. And then on the, the development actions, um, uh, and looking then at the, at the, at the battles and the, and the outcomes there, yes, we have to ensure that there's recognition um, and ownership of the ideas that they can actually be, be implemented. But just as importantly that, as was described, without in any way entering into a patronizing uh, process that where dynamic, no doubt in some cases, challenging ideas are brought forward, that those with great experience in one or other domain in a very neutral and supportive way, try to help to uh, translate that into immediate, immediately actionable language. Now, I'm not saying that some of those rec recommendations are not immediately actionable. In fact, I think that they are. Um, but it, it is that process which would allow the ideas coming through from the battles, from the work of Youth IGF, just as we saw yesterday in the Youth Summit, for them to actually be quickly and concretely implemented. Uh, and then, of course, consultation uh, within corporate structures and organizations involved in internet governance. Well, that goes back to the first two points. I do absolutely see that that's something that is very necessary. So I will now stop talking because I do want to hear more from, from the real drivers of this discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Piers. Thank you, uh, Piers Sidona, for, <clears throat> for uh, reinforcing, actually, and once again, uh, bringing this positive, uh, you know, uh, attitude, positive atmosphere, and uh, positive answer to the to the recommendations, to the voice of the young people. Mm, and to be very honest with you, we were a little bit afraid to start with this format. <laughs> I have to confess, we <laughs> we thought we hopefully they will <laughs> they will accept this. Um, and and thank you for uh, for underlining that, that we've uh, we've done well with this format. Uh, I would like just to read one comment that we have in the chat uh, that from Mark Carroll uh, from the UK. And uh, he's saying, as a former MAG member, I support the important message for Henriette and her successor, leader of the MAG, about involving youth in the MAG and its work on IGF strategy and in MAG consultations throughout the year. So thank you, Mark Carroll, for, um, you know, uh, for supporting, for, uh, for, for um, writing this. And, um, uh, and, and, and I wanted also to say that maybe what we should do, we should make a little bit, a small film of these battles so we can send to the world this film so people can see what the young people actually discussed in detail. But I would like now to, to turn to Giovanni Sapia. Giovanni, a lot has been said about this uh, youth committee advising the board of URIT. And as I said, the URIT managing.eu, but you know much more about this, how it was, how it worked, and how it can be taken as the best practices, because definitely it has been taken already by, by best practices, by another um, uh, register, by another um, organizations. But so how can we you know, uh, make this movement to make this happen in other organizations? Giovanni Sepia from, um, uh, I don't know if you're from Brussels, but from Europe. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. And uh, first of all, I'd like to join uh, uh, the comments of the previous speakers about uh, the incredibly nice uh, format of this session. So congratulations for initiating it. And, and secondly, um, indeed, uh, uh, Yuri is the registry manager of the .u top level domain. We work under contract with the European uh, Commission and we manage .u in Latin, Cyrillic and in Greek, which is quite important because we are truly multilingual and multinational uh, top-level domain operator. 
Um, last year, um, in, at the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, um, we were you know, thinking how to engage the, the youth, uh, the, the youngsters in uh, uh, our actions, uh, in the way we manage the registry and in the way we participate in the different uh, uh, events at the international level. So we had the idea to create, uh, um, to start this uh, youth committee. And thanks a lot, Julia, because you have been instrumental in helping URID to set the youth committee and, and providing us advice on possible names of uh, possible uh, members of this committee. So the committee started uh, literally in uh, uh, the third quarter of 2020. So it's a brand new committee. And it's made of five different uh, um, young representatives of the youth generation in, in Europe. And they do provide advice to us on internet governance matters, on uh, the way we should promote .u, um, the way we should engage with the overall international community. And I must say they've been uh, you know, an incredible part of the past 18 months, uh, the way we have been, uh, let's say, working together. Uh, so I, it's an experience that I would certainly recommend to other registries, because at the end, uh, we should always think about the next generation of users of the internet. And that's for us a way to not only understand um, the way they believe we should manage the registry, but the way they see the future of the registry, the way they see the future of internet governance. So we really much focus on, on the future. And again, uh, these five brave uh, youngsters uh, have been uh, really helpful uh, to this respect. So that's say it. um, it's, uh, it's a model that I would recommend any registry to, um, to let's say, implement internally, because at the end, those people will be the, the users of uh, the internet and also customers of the domain name market in the future. So that said, I'm, I'm shutting up because uh, indeed I like to hear more from the youngsters. Thanks a lot for this opportunity again. Thank you, Giovanni, and thank you for being uh, so supportive uh, during all these years um, uh, to the youth IGF. Actually, uh, the youth IGF also, um, you know, on where we are today, uh, it's 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 greatly due to your support. So thank you for for doing this, and also on your on your personal capacity, because I think it's uh, much more you know related to the personal, also real capacities. Uh, thank you, Giovanni. And I actually, I think that uh, this, uh, you, the, your initiative that to launch with the um, youth committee has been taken already in account by the registry of uh, uh, RU. And Yulia, uh, here, she's a member of this committee, right? Are you? If you can quickly just uh, give a feedback, how do you feel by being, you know, member of such a committee? Um, Yulia, are you still with us? Uh, yeah, if you mean uh, Generation Connect group, uh, yeah, I uh, I truly understand. Yeah, Julia. Uh, well, uh, talking about the Generation Connect ITU group, I can say that it is a great experience uh, which started last year in um, uh, several months ago. And we discussed some problems uh, which are connected with the problems of cybersecurity in our um, in CIS region uh, with our um, with infrastructure because ITU is a technical uh, organization. Uh, furthermore, there are some uh, problems of um, women in ICT and children protection. So there are lots of projects uh, which are uh, which are done in order to improve the situation. And I think uh, to be a part of this uh, young, of this youth group um, is uh, a chance to uh, to do something something good for uh, for my region and uh, for my country uh, in particular
All right, thank you, Yulia, for uh, bringing the answer. I think it's what you has um, what you have done. It's uh, that's why it's important to be in team, um, you know, uh, so to be complementary. So thank you for bringing your experience. I think with the dot ru committee, right? Um, um, and, and how it does work. Uh, I would like to give the floor now to Levi to quickly have a feedback from, from you guys. Very shortly, we still have 15 minutes, but we would like to show something to decision makers. So shortly, Levi, do you have comments on what you just heard? Um, I'm not really great with that. Some of the comments with regard to youth participation in the um, mag have been considered something that is important. Uh, I would like to just uh, re-emphasize that youth voices are actually cardinal because if you look at it at the moment, youth are doing more online, but if their voices are not mostly heard uh, on the mag or on higher level discussion panels, it makes creates a certain level of restriction that certain technological innovations may actually be missed and their regulation may kind of compromise how much development can happen in that area. So with that, uh, say it, it would be actually great to see more youth being involved, not only being involved, but actually policymakers taking action based on some of the recommendations that youth will raise uh, on these panels, as well as on the mic uh, or the bigger uh, internet governance space as a whole. I think those are my few comments uh, following what I've heard. Thank you, Levi, and I think it goes in line. You are one of the founders or co-founders of Youth IGF Zambia, right? And it goes in line with what, what uh, for example, Mike Carvel uh, just um, also underlined that uh, his suggestion and his support to the young people being part of the MAG or having a seat or discussion, direct discussion with the MAG, it goes also for regional and national IGF. So, you know, uh, taking back home in uh, uh, in Zambia and thank you for emphasizing this importance levy once again. Razwana, do you do you want to comment on something that you heard just quickly? Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone that um, everyone has defined and explained their uh, their participation and parts everything uh, perfectly. And I would like to add with the speakers that this is the prime time where we should start acting. And um, because everything is now getting back in normal, so we are actually looking forward to some more events or some more trainings and um, talking or debating uh, sort of things that might be helpful for, you know, taking the next step, um, whether, we, uh, whether we should have more policies on the virtual uh, world and the online world and uh, the work from home sort of things and the policies should be uh, reformed. and. Um, this is it. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Ilya. Uh, thank you, Razwana. Uh, I would like just to bring on stage the comment uh, from uh, Obin Gasset. I hope I pronounced well uh, your, um, your name, your surname and your name, uh, if not apologies. As uh, he's saying, as NGOs representing civil society, we have a key role in gathering these initiatives and make uh, concrete action plans. So uh, thank you for this comment indeed. Um, I would like now, if you allow, uh, to be, you know, to be straight to the point, to share with you uh, these two short videos, I hope we have time for two, um, on the misinformation, because that's the burning question uh, in, uh, in all discussions, and I would like to show you what young people, by, you know, kind of debating uh, in between, uh, sad about this. Uh, so let's go for the first one. I hope that the uh, audio uh, will be will be will be good. Uh, but I will ask um, um, how it's going. In my debate thesis is essentially why misinformation can be a threat to human rights. And as a training pharmacist, um, I would like to focus on public health in, in particular as um, the, the issue of focus. So I think before we start, um, it's important to understand what defines misinformation and disinformation. So a very simplified overview in a quick nutshell, misinformation is the spread of falsified information, whether unintentionally misrepresenting facts or not. However, disinformation in particularly is that species of 
misinformation that's deliberately deceptive. So this is, we know, a huge challenge facing society today and is definitely not a new one um, because anonymity and privacy online is making accountability more difficult in this area. Research has shown that false news spreads faster on social media than real news. And we probably have some firsthand experience with that as well. An MIT report discovered that falsehoods are 70% more likely to be retweeted on Twitter than facts. And true news stories take up to six times longer to reach people. But 40% um, studies have shown is health news. 40% of health news shared online is fake. And the vaccines are the biggest area of concern here. And being in a vulnerable time of the pandemic, where global health systems are at their weakest, this makes this issue even more important to address by our policymakers. And it's why I wanted to focus my side of the debate on it. I think the spread of misinformation or disinformation can cause harm to the right to health, which is Article 12. And it's simply because inaccurate information about healthcare and disease prevention, so for example, false information on vaccines, deters people from taking informed healthcare decisions that protect their health, which denies not only them, but those around them the right to health. So I think it's a severe threat to human rights. I think the issue is also not new to our COVID times. Um, we can extrapolate learnings from the Ebola vi virus crisis in, um, in West Africa, where it was particularly challenging to manage because of the epidemic associated with the Ebola virus. So we are aware that there's been a surge in COVID related misinformation or disinformation. And um, there's also an increase in fake online pharmacies. And this denies our societies the right to adequate healthcare, which is an essential human right. But some may argue that um, the European code of practice on disinformation or, or um, Malaysia's Anti-Fake News Act are proposals by policymakers that raise risk to right of freedom of expression. However, it is my perspective that this, it is the inappropriate policy responses that raise the risk of affecting freedom of expression. Otherwise, misinformation itself poses a larger human right violation, um, the right to safety, the right to health. So I think how I'd like to conclude um, this debate is that as a youth voice, I believe that we have a huge role to play. And whilst we can urge policymakers to come up with appropriate and feasible solutions um, that work in practice um, and that overcome the, the you know, the freedom um, of expression rights that they could potentially violate some of the, the responses potentially violate. We can also help this um, solve this problem as young people. And we can do this to, with our efforts to improve digital literacy and critical thinking of internet users. So I think education is really key here, um, at least um, as, as my contribution, as a contribution of young people to reduce the impacts of I think um, Mariam uh, kind of summed up and, and, and brought quite, um, uh, you know, quite strong uh, perspective there. We don't have time for, um, to watch another video, but we can promise you to put all this together and present to all of you young people, but also decision makers. We have two minutes left until before the end, and maybe we should turn now to the decision makers. If you would like just to conclude with a few words, um, Yuping Chan, uh, Pierce Donoe, and Giovanni Sapia, unfortunately, mailing Fung left because she had a, something uh, very urgent in California due to the time difference, but she promised to write us uh, in written her statement and we will disseminate this to all of you. Uh, Yuping Chan, would you like to tell us a few words, um, uh, ending words? It's a, more of a suggestion for you to consider. In the building of the Global Digital Compact, as I said before, I do think your voice and contribution will be essential. So perhaps I can ask the Youth Global IGF to think about how you can collect all these very important views and opinions and put them forward as a statement as to what future generations want to see in the Global Digital Compact. And we at the United Nations will do our best to amplify your voices and make sure that they are heard. Pierre uh, Sedona. Uh, thank you. I'll take a different tack and I'll be quick. Uh, there is a meeting of the MAG here at 6.30 with the United Nations Under Secretary General. And let's see how the process works. Uh, I will take it upon myself or with one of my colleagues to raise 
recommendation about youth participation directly in the MAG uh, and say that this comes from the youth IGF and from these battles uh, and that it is something that could be enacted very, very quickly. Let's see how that goes. And then we will report back. Thank you. Thank you, Pierce Sedona. I think young people can't hear uh, better, you know, kind of uh, um, uh, proposal for action and support. Uh, Giovanni Sepia, what you would like to tell us at the end of this, of this panel? Yeah. Just, just to thank you once more, Julia, and also to tell all the uh, youth uh, IGF, uh, all the members uh, who are attending this meeting, that uh, I remain available to. Uh, introduce uh, uh, the youngsters in the different uh, countries uh, uh, in the world to reach out to the different registries, because I think, again, that from the registry perspective, it is important to have uh, uh, the perspective of the, 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 young, the youth generation, the, the next generation, and, and that's really the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Giovanni, and, uh, and thank you uh, for all your support and the great words you um, said them. Um, uh, even if not uh, online right now, they will watch and we will distribute this, you know, discussion. And I think it's very important. And that's why at the beginning we wanted to bring all these faces and they are, and it's not the whole group. We wouldn't want to make this video, you know, long uh, and a little bit um, long and long for all of you. But uh, we would like to thank all of you, uh, the young people, uh, Levy, uh, thank you for uh, for being with us, Julia. Thank you for being with us, Rezwana. Thank you for joining during the night time, actually. Uh, and thank you, of course, to you, decision makers uh, and the leaders of the digital world, for uh, having an eye on us, or for taking our recommendations, and uh, for uh, you know for being with us. Thank you, Giovanni Sepia, uh, Pierre Sodone, uh, Yu Ping Chan, uh, Mei Ling Kun, and of course, thank you to Vincor for his uh, strong message. Uh, we will be with you and we will continue. Uh, stay safe and uh, see you soon. Thank you. And we will end this session. Bye-bye. Hi, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Ilya.